Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrated pan and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the episode 20, November the 4th. And I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everyone. Hi, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hi, Diane. All right. Let's get started here. And the recommended videos, I don't have any video clips or audio uh, for this uh, this week, but we'll just talk a little bit about it. I recommended our the, our favorite, I guess, I don't know if you want to call him, com- I guess he's a comedian. I think he's funny. Favorite artist comedian, uh, Mikey from the uh, Jerry's Artorama. And he was talking about uh, how much your art is worth. Did you, did you guys get a chance to watch that? Yes, I did. I don't know if I watched it or not. I can't remember. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, I don't know if I watched all of it. He was talking about materials and... and yeah. Yep. Yeah, what is my art worth story? If you add a story to your... To your you know, he held up a bottle and said... If this were a bottle of very special scotch, it would be, um, you could charge like $160 for it. For I mean, he was just, as an example, as opposed to if it were, you know, well scotch, which he didn't say that. But anyway, if it were inexpensive scotch that was just rock gut and you'd only charge, you know, um, maybe five, yeah, five bucks or something <laughs> for it, you know. But it's all in, a lot of times it's in the packaging and in the presentation and the story. If you put a story in there with it, it helps really that was make his, it seem that special. Was his so, and in, in determine the, uh, the, the worth of your art is, uh, it's the packaging and the story, you know, behind it and everything. So that, uh, that puts a uh, perception and people's mind, you know, they perceive it as, you know, being worth more than probably the actual physical, uh, entity. Cause I mean, after all, it's, you know, just paint the canvas, you know, and unless you use, um, gold leaf paint or something. You know, <laughs> there's not- well, you know, nowadays that stuff is a lot more expensive than it used to be. I mean, if you use, yeah. depending well, on well, what you paint on, if it's linen or, 
Belgian he women go, or he didn't go into details, but you know, he said in other videos he talked about how determining the price of the work, you know, which that involves the cost of the material, <laughs> you know. But his main emphasis, like he said, this is uh, how, answering the question, how much is my art worth? And that uh, that's the uh, uh, that was the emphasis, you know, in his comedic way. Yeah, but it, it can vary. Like he was saying, you know, the same size bottle having two different things in it, <laughs> you know, can really determine how much it's going to cost you. But even your own paintings, I mean, I, I try to kind of keep consistent pricing for my sizes, but like sometimes some paintings take, you know, a month or more to paint and other things take, you know, I'm done in a day. It just depends on the thing I'm painting and how fast it happens. So it's like, you know, do you factor in all that extra time if it takes you a lot longer to get it to work? <laughs> you know, or or is it, I mean, you can have more detail in a painting, you know, and they can be the same size and one can have a whole lot more detail or a lot more um, technical, you have to be a lot more technical with whatever you're painting because it's yeah. not, um, you know, it's gotta be more precise. So it's so really the same size painting can be different prices, and sometimes paintings turn out and you really like them yourself personally, and you don't really want to sell it. <laughs> Is he the one was talking about that? I've been guilty. Yeah, I've been guilty of that. <laughs> you put a higher price on it because you, really <laughs> you don't want it to leave the house. <laughs> yeah, he talked about that, and then that's where if you're not careful, you mess yourself up. You know, you know, because it's, yeah. I also, I, I recall, I think it was Stefan Bauman who said, who mentioned that, you know, or maybe it was somebody else that don't get emotional with your artwork, but we can't help it. Right. Cause these are our babies, you know, they're, it's, it's hard not to get you know emotional, but well, sometimes I get emotional about some of them and sometimes I don't, it just depends, you know. If I have one that I'm emotional about, it doesn't leave the house. That's it's just not for sale. That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, you keep paintings like that. At the moment, it seems like you know it's the, probably the best thing you've done, or or it just hits you in a certain way. You want to keep it, and then a month or two later, you look at it, and you're like, why in the world am I keeping this? It's like, you know, because you've gotten better or whatever since then, or done other ones that are better than that one hopefully yeah but at the time it seemed like that was like you know special to yeah, you that was reason. you're right up here <laughs> you're enamored with it when you got done with it and then it lost it yeah, kind of wears off <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially when bills come in they have to get paid <laughs> yeah yeah exactly because we're all you know yes we're doing you need this. some more canvases to paint on or something we're doing this for yeah. love of the art, but we do, we are trying to, you know, make a career, make it, you know, make a living. So you have to sell something. Well, that's like my, uh, for me, uh, the pressure of sales is, is not real heavy with me because my daughters, my, I'm doing this for the sake of my legacy for my adult daughters. And they pretty much like everything. In fact, they've got certain pieces that they <laughs> picked out that they want. They don't want me to sell. And I said, well, you know, I got to sell. Well, if you don't sell it, just make sure that you keep it for us. <laughs> they, they want all my artwork, regardless. So, you know, if I sell something, yeah. fine. If I don't, I know they're going to. I have jewelry it. that's like that, you know, because some of the pieces that I've made are are just, you know, they turn out really nice and I want to keep them. And I look at them and say, you know, you just can't keep every piece of jewelry that you make. <laughs> you just don't <laughs> yeah. have any, you know, so I just put them in the table and let them let them go because so what diane started was talking about earlier and you know the putting the time in and everything that leads into uh something that uh, i wanted to discuss for our listeners we're discovering that not all of our listeners are artists they're uh, art enthusiasts or they're people who are interested in art and maybe they you know want to learn a little bit about it we as artists, we have to be careful because we do what is called art speak. We like when I uh, say that 
I am an emerging representational artist, I would think that 90% of the people who are non artists would say, well, that sounds fancy, but what the heck does it mean? <laughs> so that leads into, uh, you know, Diane, when you were talking, you know, some of the detail, well, what do you mean by that? By what, uh, what details, what, uh, as far as your process, you know, talk a little bit about, about your process. Well, I'm an impressionistic realist painter, <laughs> which means that I paint realistic looking paintings, but they're not um, photo realistic, which there's not like, when you look at them really close, there is no detail. It's more um, an impression of what the thing looks like. So, but when you back away from it, it all becomes it all comes together and it's realistic. Uh, in a photorealistic type painting, no matter how close or far away you are, it's all um, clear, like what it is. There's, it's um. Hmm. I I guess that's the best way I can explain it. I'm trying to think how you can explain it over the that's a, that's, airwaves that's here. An exercise for us to is yeah <laughs> continue i mean i could it's probably easier to see the difference than it is to exactly. try well, to talk right. about what well, it is. photo realism is yeah. just making the painting look like the photograph except it's a painting so that's photo realism yeah but it's it's clear no matter how close or far away you are from the right. painting yeah I mean, that would be impressionism. It's not it, when you're up no. close, it's all a mess and it looks almost abstract and you can't really tell what it is, but when you back away from it, it all comes. Yeah. It has to do so, with the handling of the, uh, of the light, the light and the shadows against the, uh, the, the, uh, object that you're painting, like, you know, a tree or leaves <laughs> or, or, or the grass or whatever. Right. Yeah. That's all part of it. And you, there's a lot more brush strokes and colors. Yeah, and I, I mean, there's a lot of layering, but it just, that's how I do it. I mean, there's other people that do the same type of work, but they don't necessarily have the same process I do. It just comes out kind of the now, same. Now when you mentioned, okay, because I'm going to, I'm trying, you know, as, as, as I said. <laughs> I know, it sounds confusing. <laughs> no, no, actually, before we started this podcast, you know, I, I you know, I said I wanted to try to, to break down our process, explain all the process, but break it down into terms that non-artists could understand. So you're on a roll. You got starters here. So I'm going to kind of like be the <laughs> uh, be the the uh, devil's advocate in a sense. Mm -hmm. Now, when you said layering, what do you mean by layering? You know, for someone who is not a non-artist. Yeah. Well, what the way I work, I work in layers of color. Um, so depending on what, what I, what I'm trying to paint, I usually start with darker colors and then layer on top of that other colors that are, that make up the form. So, and sometimes I'll do that wet, wet paint into wet paint and other times I'll do it, um, in dry layers. So you, you let the paint dry. And then you come back in after it's dry and add more layers. So, you, and you're working in oils, right? This is I work in oil paint. Yeah. So that's but I do the same thing in, in other mediums too. You can do the same thing in acrylic or, or watercolor. Yeah. That's why you're, but it's a, the, you know, there's different processes depending on what I'm trying to achieve and how, um, how much detail and how much, um, atmosphere and all that kind of stuff feeds into it so it so if somebody, it all depends if, if you know somebody was was reading uh, online or whatever uh that technique if they came across the word glazing is that pretty much what you're what you're describing is um glazing is a form of layering <laughs> there's different um what they call mediums that you mix with your paints to allow them to work differently and um, dry at different rates. So depending on what I'm trying, the way I'm trying to work would depend on how I, what medium I use and how I use it, which gets really complicated if, you, <laughs> if you're not a painter, it yeah. can be really complicated. I mean, there's different formulas for mediums. Different artists have their own formulas. Um, 
There's mediums that you can buy already pre-made, as well as homemade versions. Um, so every artist kind of has their own formulas and their own way of working with those formulas. And the, the beautiful it's thing a learn process. The Excuse beautiful me? thing about it is not all is better is is right compared because it might be right for that art style, but it may not be right for the other artist style. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, you know, other artists I've talked with or work with or whatever, I've, I've, you know, they have their own formulas, and they're like, oh yeah, you should try this one. <laughs> you know, it works great for me. You know, kind of thing. You know, the new shiny object. So you try it, and you're like, oh my god, I don't know what they're talking about. This is horrible. <laughs> you know, it's not working for me. So you kind of go through this whole process of trial and error and, um, you know, trying to find things that work for the way that you work. And once you find those things, you know, you, it's, I mean, you still, I, you, I still experiment with other, other stuff, and I still like to try different things, but I kind of have my own set um mediums and things that i use and i know how they work and the same way with your color palette like the, all the colors on your palette um the different colors of paint that you use is the same way like you get used to how certain paints mix and different even different brands of the same colors mix differently yes absolutely and you get used to certain ones and it's really hard to not not hard but it's different if you change up that or like some of the manufacturers stop making a color that you use all the time or or they change their formula and all of a sudden it's not quite the way it was and you're like ah but <laughs> so you have to kind of work with it a while again and try to figure out figure it out but um yeah a lot of it is trial and error i know when, when i was in college we we had to just mix color we weren't allowed to use any <laughs> we're like we had a mix uh charts you know color charts and um just to learn how the colors on your palette work together and how they mix and how they come how you come up with different colors and you know a lot of that you it takes a lot of time to learn all that but after you have done it for a while it becomes automatic and you don't even think about it really anymore so much it's um, but it's, you know, miles on your brush, it takes a long time to learn all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, and that's when it gets, gets to the point of, uh, you've heard so many different, um, art teachers, instructors, you know, they said, uh, you know, spending 10,000 hours in a studio, 10,000 hours painting. That's what that, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. 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 It does take a long time. I mean, it's just like anything, um, you know, playing football or whatever, any any kind of um, anything you want to learn how to do, you have to spend a lot of time doing it and learning all the ins and outs of how it works in order to before you can get to where you really to the point where you can really create the thing you're expecting to create when you sit down to do it. It's not going to happen just like you know in a few hours. Um, it's like, you know, um, any sport or learn how to play an instrument or whatever. You can't play like, you know, um, like a, at a concert or something on stage in front of people the first time you sit down to a piano. It's, you know, you're not going to do that even within a week. You have to be doing it for years and years before you get to that point. Yep. And same way with painting. It's like you can't. You expect you know miracles have a have a masterpiece the first time you attempt it so it's it's anything like that you that's like that you need to spend a lot of time on that you want to be accomplished at and that's well and that's like you mentioned earlier uh, a term i i know that uh, several of our non uh, artists you know listeners have heard or come across you said an artist palais you yeah. know palette yeah artist palette what 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 is that the palette is just a um a compilation of the colors that you are using for that particular painting okay i mean all the 
now when you all the colors come you know you can look in the catalogs or online or anywhere and in, in in the uh, art stores or the um you know, your michael stores or whatever and see hundreds of different paints and colors and <laughs> you know it's there's a lot to choose from if you want to buy them all you can but you don't need to like if you're starting out as a hobbyist you know i've heard so many people do, you know they come up and they say you know well oh god look it's 36 different colors when in reality are they going to use all 36 colors probably not you know <laughs> you know because you can get by with just six colors basically you know and it's what you what you said earlier about learning how to mix you know your different you know colors and yeah they, there's there's quite a few artists now that are using minimal palettes and you can pretty much get any color you want from a minimal palette but you it takes a lot of time to learn how to mix the colors in the right amounts to get the colors that you need yeah. or that you want yeah. and to be able to do that consistently <laughs> yeah so that's the t that's, and that's the, where the experience comes in. Yep, the ten thousand yeah. hour you know activity, you know the mm -hmm. painting and painting and painting. I mean, you just got to keep creating, you know, creating the art, you know, and uh, you know. In previous uh, podcasts, we referred to you know Stephen Bauman, and one of the things that which I have been able to achieve, I followed his advice. He says, with each creation of art, with each painting, it's practice for the next one, and those things that that talked about the, using the different colors is uh it, that um yeah i apply it and to the next painting i remember okay i mixed it this time this way what if i tried this way this way you know a little bit different oh that is so fantastic and i try to remember so that when the next painting that i'm working on you know i and by doing that and but you have to leave, you know two or three pieces a week you know to otherwise if you take three or four weeks off you, you forget, forget. <laughs> and it's like starting over again you know mm -hmm. and so uh that uh yeah that being consistent you know working there and for our listeners you know when you said an artist palette uh there are specific colors the different artists use like you said a minim minimus you know palette are like I have certain colors I, I favor the most and I'm able to utilize in my work that they look differently. I get this, the same, the, the different color, but I'm using the same combination, you know, of, of colors to, to achieve. Well, the, the real trick when you start getting into it, if you only use certain colors all the time, you should try to expand that and mix it up, like pick a different color blue instead of the same one you use all the time and see what you can do to get those same colors. You know what I mean? Like yeah. use a, um, if you're using ultramarine blue, try to use a um, cerulean blue and see if you can get those, mix the colors and still get the same colors that you get. Believe it or not, it gives, I actually, I actually did that with my watercolors because I used to use ultramarine blue, and I would mix, you know, with a little bit more water, <clears> or <throat> you know, with the, and, or, and use more of a wash, you know, for like for my skies and things, you know, mm -hmm. and some of my shadowing. But then I switched to a cerulean blue. I don't have to mix that much. It was amazing, <laughs> you know. But yeah, you're right. That uh, it, it it works out, you know, a little. You know, uh, a little var variations, you know, hues here, you know, here and there. Constance, you got anything? We're about ready to wrap this up. You got anything you want to add, you know, add to this? I know we've let that uh, talk, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, color palettes are pretty much um, an artist's preference. I mean, you find colors that you like to, to use that get you where you want to go. And then, so you kind of just, after a while, stick with those colors. But. I do every once in a while like to get another color or find out somebody will say something about a color that I've never used before and I'll get a tube of it and start introducing it into my palette just to see where it goes, you know, and uh, sometimes you get really excited about the fact that you have a new color on your palette. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, yeah, so. it, it inspires your creativity, yeah. 
Sure does. So, so. Okay. Well, this uh, we're going to continue this discussion in uh, different forms in future podcasts, folks, so that for all of our non-artist listeners, maybe you can uh, – learn a little bit about the you know the artist process and uh, what goes through our minds and when we're creating this art and hopefully uh it will uh, give you a little more information and encourage you to go visit uh, a gallery or go visit a museum and uh, look at that piece of artwork uh with a little bit uh, different frame of mind and maybe understand okay now i know why uh that piece is uh considered uh, valuable because uh, no one was doing it before this fellow started that, you know? You can, so that, that's our goal is to, besides uh, providing a little bit of entertainment here, is to uh, try to teach a little bit. We're not experts, but we're all experienced artists at different le skill levels, and that's what makes it nice. So thank you to everyone for listening. This is November the 4th, episode 20 of the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clyde J.K.L. saying goodbye. Bye-bye, Diane. Bye-bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody, and thanks for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J.K.L. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J.K.L. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.